Okay, good afternoon everyone. I hope you have been enjoying all the sessions during the day. Uh, my name is Dinesh Sharma and today I'll be talking about the topic AI Enhanced Agility, the future of project management. Uh, before I start, I would like to thank the organizing committee of Scrum Day India for giving me this opportunity to speak in this wonderful conference. I'll start with this question, with a question. What do you see on the screen? What does the image mean? A human hand and a artificial machine hand, robot hand, and a light bulb in between. Any statements from anyone? What does it mean? So what it means, <laughs> what it means, we humans with our natural intelligence have to collaborate with machines with artificial intelligence to generate breakthrough innovations. With that note, let me move forward. Little bit about myself. I have an industry experience of more than 27 years. Uh, I have worked with a number of organizations, both product and services, wide range of domains and technologies, into a project, project program and delivery management in different roles for almost 16 plus years, more than a decade into the agile. And I have been writing a lot of articles and white papers uh, in the space of agile and project management. I have been speaking in a number of conferences. Uh, this is my eighth one. And uh, yeah, it has been uh, a wonderful journey till now. So with that, uh, I'll move forward. This is the structure of my presentation. I'll speak about uh, the topic and then talk about uh, AI in a bit and then what is the advantage of using Agile, okay? And what, how uh, AI, can, AI and Agile can collaborate. I'll uh, try to keep it interesting in terms of giving examples so that you are able to relate and take, uh, take it as a takeaway for your respective areas. Then I'll talk about the implementation strategy and then uh, we will talk about the challenges and future outlook and then conclude and uh, would like to keep some time for the Q&A. So uh, let's talk about AI first. So AI, what does it mean? So in simplistic terms, AI is when a, a machine is given a kind of set of tools and techniques so that it access some intelligence. In simplistic term, you can understand it that way. It's not a new concept. It's almost 60 years old. So there has been something going on in the industry, uh, in the world around AI. And I still remember my uh, one presentation during my college days uh, with AI NN as the topic. And at that moment, uh, it was just understood as a something which is very futuristic. Nobody was able to actually visualize it, what it is, okay? It has been, a lot of work has been done since then. But off late, it has been starting to touch our lives. Okay, and it has become more of a commodity. Now everybody, even my uh, 10, 12 years old uh, pe people, school students are using uh, uh, generative AI in some form, chat GPT is some, uh, somehow becoming a household name. Agile, as you know, as we all know, uh, has been a different way of working, which has been introduced almost two decades back. Before that, we all used to work in the waterfall variant. There were so, so many different techniques were used. But when AI came, uh, came up, Agile came up, so it was completely a different way of looking at things. And now it is becoming more of a de facto in the industry for software development. It's new way of developing software across the board, across the industry. When AI is combined with Agile, it is extremely powerful and it has the potential to revolutionize project management. And we'll see how. So talking about the power of AI, so it has, there are a lot of things which we can get from AI. It can help us automate, do repetitive tasks, high volume tasks. It can generate complex analytics. 
It can process large amount of data. There is a huge list of things which can be done with AI. But broadly, if you see, we can categorize it into three different sections. The first one is AI assisted. Assisted, augmented, and autonomous. Three different levels of AI uh, usage, AI utilizing AI power. When we talk about assisted, it can be simple things like uh, asking AI to write some mails for us, do some kind of uh, basic things for, for us. But we are not involving AI into the decision making process. That is your assisted. At next level, when we actually see uh, utilize AI into our decision making process in some form, and as a classic example, it can be like diagnostic tools which we have, uh, diagnostic, uh, different diagnostic equipment we have, and doctors, medical practitioners we know are using those tools to utilize the inferences in order to take decisions. So there's some bit of involvement in decision making process, and that's what augmented means. And then autonomous is, uh, we know the classic example of autonomous car where AI is taking decisions in some form, okay? Without human intervention, AI can take decisions. That is your autonomous category. So it has got high potential, and these are the ways it can be used. Agile, I'll not speak a lot about it, because obviously we are into an agile conference. And it is a broad term, which we all understand in some form or the other. It's more of iterative and incremental way of software development. And one way of looking at it is the cycle where we talk about plan, design, develop, test, deploy, review, and launch. So this is a continuous cycle of development, and it has already been accepted by the industry as a very effective way of doing a software development. So now, uh, how do we leverage with, uh, with the power of AI applied into power of agile? So what uh, I am recommending here is that we can have three levels of application basically, three levels of integration, okay? First level is that when you involve AI at a foundational level. When we say foundational level, where we talk about models like Scrum. So anybody in this group who is not aware of Scrum? No one, yeah? So it's a foundational level. So you may not be using uh, advanced versions like SAFE or maybe more uh, scaled versions like SAFE, but you would be using a uh, foundation model like uh, Scrum, basically. So at foundational level, you can apply Agile, uh, AI into Agile. And the next level can be at a more complex levels, where you are dealing with multiple teams, and you can use any of the scaled Agile uh, frameworks and models. That is level two. And when we talk about across-the-board implementation, that's uh, Level three, which is across the board into the project management space. So three levels you can apply, and I'll be sh uh, showing you with some examples how we can do that, okay? Let's talk about foundational agile. So when you talk about foundational agile, uh, we know that Scrum by far is the most popular agile models, basically, foundational agile models, so to say, okay? So well, we also saw in this room uh, no one is a person who is not using Scrum. So Scrum is so popular across the industry, we all know that. By far, it is the most popular frameworks, okay? And when we actually talk about Scrum, we talk about Scrum events. It's powered by the Scrum events. And if we are focusing on empowering the events with AI, it can really create a right level of effect if making it more and more effective, the agile teams more effective. And that's what I'll talk about, how we can do that. Yes, so uh, this is a simplistic depiction of the Scrum events, okay? So I've taken the liberty to put execution into daily Scrum, okay? Uh, just to complete the picture, because we have the fifth uh, event as sprint, so I've just put into daily Scrum, because it's about day-to-day -day function which we do, and mostly talking about some bit of execution there, okay? Now, when we talk about sprint planning, there are multiple ways where we can make it more effective with uh, AI coming into, brought into it, basically. Uh, uh, so we do a lot of things as part of sprint planning, as we know, uh, as an exercise in sprint planning or before sprint planning. We carry out backlog creation, backlog refinement, uh, sprint goal setting, sprint goals, identification of potential impediments which we can get in the, in the sprint, basically. So all those aspects we carry out as part of sprint planning in some form. 
So how we can take help of AI in that segment? So I'll demonstrate with an example. Okay. So when you get in the sprint planning or before sprint planning as a preparation, basically, what you can do? So I've used some uh, public LLMs here to demonstrate this. Okay. So first is that how do we create the backlog? So if you give a context to the public LLM, I've used public LLM Cloud A here. So with an example, let me show you what it is. So with an example prompt, what I've said is that I want to generate the product backlog items for an e-commerce B2C site okay, in the electronics goods domain. So you have to give some context. It is going to generate the backlog for you, basically. So entire backlog it is able to generate. Now another aspect we want to do is the sprint planning, generate the sprint plan. So as a next step, what I have do, done, I have taken a different uh, tool log called Gemini, okay? And given the uh, context here that these are the backlog items, now I want to generate the sprint plan. So if you see, I have asked it to generate the sprint plan for three sprints, it is generating it, it is actually identifying the, all the aspects of the stories and detailing del 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 it out and also placing them, prioritizing them into the, bucketing them into the different spins. Okay, so it's extremely uh, fast, extremely effective. It doesn't mean that you have to use it as is. Obviously, you have to apply your judgment over it. Now, there are other tools which are embedded into uh, uh, tools like Jiva. So Jiva has so many plugins. Uh, AI Assistant is one of them which we have used here. So you can utilize it for writing your acceptance criteria, uh, elaborating your writing different segments of the stories to take it else to, uh, to be able to enhance it further, okay? So GPT for GI is another tool. There are many embedded uh, tools which can be, uh, plugins which can be embedded into Jiva, which can be used for, to be able to enhance your stories in some way and take help it in the sprint planning level, basically. So this is... So it's a combination of tools. Some uh, tools might be paid, some tools might be free. So both the combinations are available, okay? So you can apply, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. No, no, you don't need to provide story point. You have to provide the context to it, okay? So you have to provide some knowledge to it that, okay, I want to divide into three spins and this is the backlog. It will do it from its perspective. Okay. But it doesn't mean that you have to use it as, as, is, as is, okay? You have to apply your own judgment. You can utilize it and then use it. Any idea it is, is it using the complexity or it is deriving the complexity from that user story by its own uh, AI? Yes, it can derive the complexity of user story as well, but it's context driven. So I have given the context that e-commerce domain, Okay. I have these backlog items, that knowledge I have given up to a certain level, okay, at a high level. If you do a completely blank, it will be generating completely th uh, theoretical, which might be not uh, useful for you, okay? Uh, yes, Dinesh, I have a question. Yes. So I have used this plugin. But only problem with this, the client doesn't give the approval mm -hmm. because of uh, compliance and other issues. Yeah. So they don't allow us to add the plugin. I've already used this and I'm, I'm regressively using this. Mm -hmm. So what to do like in that case? See, uh, there can be challenges like that or because it's contextual, there's uh, learning involved, industry has to mature to be able to use the plugins and all. But you can use public LLMs also in the process because if you're not able to use something inside Jiva, you can use it outside Jiva. So I demonstrated that also. You can use the public LLMs for that purpose as well. You have to give the context and you'll get the answer from them. It, get, it gives equally good output as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will give good output. Then you'll have to manually cap copy it into the Jiva. Okay? Fine. Let's, let me move on. Yes, please. are created, they have used the, uh, I mean, they have allocated the stories under the sprints, but how is AI deciding the order of delivery? AI basically? has a knowledge, so you have to understand, public LLMs have that knowledge of the vast volume of data they have. Now okay. you have to leverage from that knowledge, okay. and you have to use it for your own aspect and then utilize it further. You have to apply your own knowledge as well on top of that, okay? Okay. 
So it will give you some indicative answers, okay, which will be fairly accurate, but it may not be 100% accurate. You'll have to apply your own. But data. wouldn't be it an ad hoc or an overhead because simply we are dealing with our type of industries or uh -huh. the kind of organization we are falling in and AI will give a generic kind of a, you know, user stories. No, no, it's not that, or like that. It's not like that. Uh, uh, the tools, public LLMs have been trained with massive amount of data across the industry, across different domains, okay. So if you give the context, so I had given the context that I am talking about e-commerce industry and this specific domain in e-commerce industry, then you will get fairly accurate answers. Okay? If you talk about something very generic, you will get generic answers. Clear? Yeah. top in the competitors because mm -hmm. uh, most of the uh, companies of the product company typically have similar product but their features only compete them and give them the ranking that which is the top and second. Mm -hmm. But if I try to use public LLMs to create story or some, something, will that no, also be objection by the customer because their functionality may get exposed but you are trying to build on the product because anything that you search in the LLM the no, history no, no, gets no, created no, no, no. and data. See when you, when you are actually giving the public LLM the story or uh, uh, epic names basically mm -hmm. that's the high level epic names you are giving Okay. and that's nothing confident. So you have to just apply that judgment. It should cannot be having something very specific. It cannot so be something specific very business new. business rules are not advisable because, because otherwise customers yeah. probably yeah, make yeah, the restrictions you, you to use You should be that. conscious about that. So if it is something very proprietary anything which is new to be worked by the customer which is Confidential in nature, you have to be cautious about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. but these are specifically in almost all the domains you can use it. Just to give an example, as a product owner, you uh, can take almost one or two days just to generate the stories. You can click it, uh, generate it on a, on a click of a button. That's so fast. So, so we are more referring on that in our individual capacity, how we can improve our efficiency or the speed of the work versus mm -hmm. what we were doing earlier and now, yeah. but may not be directly related to that I'm going to create the whole product backlog, prioritization, everything. Using you have to apply the judgment. Yeah. judgment. Yeah. It's an aiding tool. It is exactly. not. It, it is not going to replace your work assist. It is going to augment your work in some form. Yeah, until okay. unless it is licensed by customer, it has to be individual capacity and be judgmental or contextual. That's what. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. most of the things will not be confidential in nature. If you go by it, most of the things you can use. Okay. Only thing which are very confidential, you will not be should not be using it here. Okay. okay. Using their data. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a claim. That's a claim we know about. Okay. See, on, only only request uh, to the participants, uh, team, only request to the part participant is that it is a lot of content I have to present, okay? So I'll be cautious about it because otherwise I'll miss something because a lot of things you will have takeaways from this session. I'm, I'm, I'm sure about it, huh? So, but please uh, mark your questions. Uh, most questions are welcome, but uh, we have to j j be just conscious about the time. Okay. So, fine. Uh, going on to the next one, which is daily scrum. Uh, daily scrum uh, and execution is about execution part of it. So, we do have a lot of things which uh, keep on happening on daily scrum on day-to-day -day -day basis. And Jiva has store for a lot of things. So, alignment with the sprint goal, how well we are aligned, what are the impediments which are getting generated, okay, and all the kind of different kind of support to the teams, all are covered here. Now I'll just uh, give an example here. So it is very difficult to keep track of what is happening in the different uh, sprints basically. And then there's a very good tool uh, which I'd like to show here which is called step size, okay? So what it does is it can connect with your Jira. You can connect it with Jira very easily with very, uh, very simple steps. And you can specify the time duration, okay? You, have to sp you can specify the board, you can specify the time duration and it is going to give you all the things which are happening in your day-to-day uh, uh, -day things with your team. And it will give you an analysis of the same. So how many, how, what are the stories which progress, what are the stories which could not progress, and what was the kind of challenges which were faced by the team, what were the impediments faced by the team, okay? All those things are getting uh, tracked because of whatever is there in the Jira, it is going to analyze that. Because Jira has a lot of information or so that's a plugin to Jira, which is actually really useful in different segments. So you will see that it will give you 
different si uh, kind of information and then uh, you will be able to see specific aspects of uh, people who have worked uh, on different areas and you see different category of information which will be available here. So this is one tool and there's another tool called spinach.io which is also a very good tool for integration between different systems like Slack uh, can be integrated to your Jira, can be integrated to your calendar as well and now if you use it it will also uh, track what is happening in the team communication, what are the impediments getting generated, and it will also log ticket into Jira. It, can, it has the potential to also log ticket into Jira based upon the impediments which you are getting. Okay? So all those things are covered as part of this tool, uh, which is called spidis.io. Uh, again, this is, uh, there are many more tools. This is, um, these are some example tools only, but these are extremely powerful. Just a moment. Yeah. So moving on, the next uh, section I want, an event I want to cover is the X can show the let me just yeah so um, Delhi's common execution we talked about uh, let me just go back to main uh, slide so let's talk about the sprint review um, so for sprint review we do have a lot of activities here uh, sprint performance analysis Sprint DAC, prepa uh, review DAC preparation. So this is uh, one of the best practice that we want to generate the review DAC and all. And what is the feedback analysis of the stakeholders and all. So uh, here also I'd like to demonstrate uh, uh, one tool which talks about So this is uh, called Walk Your Sprint Review. Okay, so what it is going to do is that you'll, it will generate, uh, it will utilize the Jira and uh, take all the stories which have been developed in the sprint and it's able to generate your uh, sprint review deck basically which you can use. Okay, uh, similarly there is also a public tool which is available called Gamma. Okay, so you can, what you can do is like you, you can utilize uh, public LLMs to generate the slide decks or you can utilize it directly also. You can provide the information to it from Jira, whatever you have. And it is going to generate the slide deck for you for the sprint review, okay? So this can be really useful and it can be really a effective uh, kind of a way to generate the review deck which you can use in your sprint reviews basically, okay? So uh, very useful in terms of uh, having this artifact ready when you are conducting your sprint review, okay? So this is about this is about this. Uh, so what you get is a uh, spin review getting generated. Now I think next step is the spin retrospective. Okay, so this is a uh, first spin retrospective. Also, you can have a um, lot of ways you can enhance the retrospectives. Okay, so you have a spin performance analytics. Effectiveness analytics, uh, analysis, how effective you have, uh, retrospective have been, and retrospective reports you can get generated. So there are many reports which are used for spent retrospectives, we know that. But there's another very good, uh, very good AI enabled tool, which I would like to demonstrate here quickly, which is, which is uh, called Power Retro, okay? So what it does is that uh, in addition to the general uh, facilitation of helping you retro run, to run your retrospective, it has the power to actually collate the spin retrospective points. For example, if you have multiple points given by the team 
it is always the possibility that all many of the points mean the mean the same thing and it is a task in itself to uh, derive them to logical points which are actionable okay so this tool can give it for you it can just uh, combine the uh, uh, kind of output of the retrospective and also translate into retrospective actions and even it can generate the actions into your jira board as well as tickets it can generate it and then it has got also a good power to actually generate the reports for the retrospective as well and you have the generate the pdf version as well so you can conduct the retrospective much more effectively with the help of ai assistance here so this is another way you can enhance your uh, ai uh, you can use ai to enhance your retrospective uh, dinesh uh, is it using the transcript to uh, take care of everything sorry is it using the transcript of the meeting mm -hmm. to call out the required inputs and put it in this form or is it using something yeah, yeah. else see it is it is uh, just like any retrospective board tool it is having that feature it can use all the steps you can actually put your uh, like okay. points in the during it's the it's a meeting. tool okay. okay mostly ai enabled kind of a, a kind of a, a tool basically okay so these are the ways in which we can get help from paid? ai paid. is it a paid to paid tool is it paid tool or free it's a paid tool uh, but yeah uh, you can get uh, like it's not a lot of money there but it's a paid tool okay. as i understand okay and there are it's also a plugin to jira so there are a lot of uh, tools which are available in jira which are uh, like which are plugins which you can utilize a lot of them are free also a lot of them are paid also okay so this is about applying ai into the uh, foundational level okay now let's talk about uh, applying at the next level uh, so if the com uh, context becomes more complex like uh, in the scaled context basically you have so many scaled uh, uh, kind of frameworks and models uh, like safe less so these are some of the areas which i have picked up which are mostly generic in nature where you can apply ai to enhance your uh, uh, implementation of this uh, these uh, these frameworks and models so areas where you can utilize them is like resource allocation optimization so multiple team work working uh, like in the context uh, of complex uh, context basically so you can utilize the historical data to see what is the effectiveness of different teams uh, and then what are the resource needs and accordingly uh, work on that area similarly from cross team cross team collaboration in terms of dependencies and interdependencies you can help uh, get get help from the ai tools okay predictive analytics in planning you can use you can use automated testing and quality assurance and you can also use continuous improvement through the insights basically because it it will be a complex context you can use the ai tools to get help there and automated release management also you can utilize ai tools now the uh, third uh, uh, level uh, which is uh, project management which is across the board all the project management areas included i have done a simplistic uh, representation of the same okay so these are all project management process groups we can also be uh, considered at, uh, as different stages of project management uh, project management life cycle so we do a lot of things into the, these different stages so project initiation has uh, main uh, some of the key activities as project charter preparation and the identification of stakeholders okay now uh, it uh, ai tools can help in enhancing your project evaluation feasibility okay so we can use the data to decide whether the project is worth doing or not okay that is one of the area you can get ai help identification of stakeholders is a difficult task that is where you can take ai's help there is a, a tool which is called pm auto which can be used to actually prepare your project calendar basically auto plan your project calendar okay so during planning you can utilize them and then there are public llms which uh, we are all aware about like chat gpt gemini and claude so this also you can use with all the prompts which we have uh, in your day to day function in this area similarly for project planning when we talk about project planning we actually focus on project management plan communication plan risk management plan these are some of the key areas so it can help you to prepare project plan with assistance it can also help you auto plan your calendar so there is one good tool, tool called motion this can help you to auto plan your calendar okay so that's one of the very good tool 
and then uh, you have uh, effective risk management also carry out, can be carried out using the AI tools. Again, again the public LLMs, there are many more. I have mentioned here Chat, Chat GPT, Gemini, Claudia. There are many more. We know that. Yeah. So you can utilize any of them. For project execution, um, it can be used like uh, the areas which we focus on here is managing resources, developing and completing deliverables. This is where the execution happens. And uh, for improved resource efficiency, AI tools can be used. Task automation, uh, again, pmauto.ai is a good tool to see how we can automatic, uh, do an automatic allocation of the task effectively. And there's another tool called uh, chat PDF. It is a very simplistic tool, but it is very effective uh, in terms of generating the, managing your knowledge, basically. You can uh, input into it the PDFs, different PDF documents, and you can uh, get an NLP-based kind of interaction with it, okay? People can use it with an NLP-based interaction. Very effective, very useful. Uh, project monitoring and control, tracking project uh, progress against objectives, monitoring controlling risk, and change control. These are the focus areas here. Here also you can get a lot of help. And in, uh, with the project progress tracking, you can use AI tools to make it more effective. We can also do auto risk uh, monitoring and control. Effective change control is one of the areas. And then another area is that uh, with, uh, with continuous uh, set of progress meetings and all, two tools, uh, one is Whisper uh, V3 and JPR.ai. Whisper V3 can translate your uh, voice into text, basically. And uh, Zapier AI can translate the text into MOM very effectively. So whatever meetings you conduct, you can actually translate into MOMs, structured MOMs, and you can use it for further use. Then the last section is uh, project closure. So you have uh, closure activities and final reporting for the project when it gets closed. So enhanced project closure. So Rike is another tool which is uh, very effective in getting you into the project closure reports with a lot of good templates available. And then you can generate best practices and lessons learned. Again, the public LLMs you can use for all the activities here. In, in fact, all the areas, if you provide the right uh, context, it can help you basically, okay? Moving on. So what can be the implementation strategy? This is, this is what I'll recommend as an implementation strategy for anybody who's wanting to apply AI into Agile, okay? So there are these five steps which I, I would recommend. The first one is generating awareness. So you have to conduct sessions and trainings and make the organization aware about uh, AI. And it's extremely important to first understand what it is basically, okay? So making the organization learn it. Then as a step two, focus on foundation. Don't uh, begin to start big, start small. So easiest way to start is at the foundational level which is at scum level, okay? Picking few teams and applying it at a scum level and you can see the impact. And then you can broaden the impact with the scaled context. So some of the complex uh, bigger teams, you can try applying it. Then you can apply on the project management, some of the critical areas and then you can continuously get into feedback loop and scale it up as, as we go along, okay? So this is the general implementation strategy. I would like to also show how it can be applied in terms of another concept called creating your own GPT model, okay? And this is extremely uh, powerful uh, uh, model. Uh, when you are, so OpenAI has given this uh, provision uh, in the paid tool that you can create your own GPT, okay? What it means is that you can utilize the power of public LLM, you can utilize the power of chat GPT, apply the organization context on top of it and leverage from it, okay? It's very easy, very straightforward. It's not complex. It's a paid tool, but also like it is extremely effective, you can think about it and it can help in a major way. So I'll demonstrate how it can help you. So the steps which, can, which are being used is that, first of all, you need to create the model so while you are creating the model, it's a single one-step process. Then you have to train the model where you have to provide the organizational data, organizational context, information. And then you have to deploy it and make it available to the organization for use. And then continuously feed it with it more and more information at least as it comes in, comes in to keep it latest, okay? Keep it up to date. And then you can leverage from it, okay? Let me show with some example. 
So creating the model is, uh, as I said, is uh, very straightforward. There's a concept called GPT Builder. There's another new concept which they have already launched is customer GPT, which is another, uh, at an enterprise level, you can utilize it. Okay, this is at single license level. You can scale it up for the smaller organization. But for bigger organization, you can use custom GPT as well. Now, what it does is, you have a simple button to create, and you specify the information of what you're trying to create, okay? So you have to give the information, it'll ask for the information, what is the purpose of your model? You just specify that, it'll ask for a name, and it'll also ask for uh, the basic things like what, uh, what, what is the logo you would like to keep and all. So once you specify all this information, it is going to create it, and then once you have created it, there is an option here, if you see in the top, which is configure. So you, had, uh, you can specify your data into the model. Okay, you can put your um, organization level metrics and KPIs and all information which you want to give to the model so that it can support you and it can create the model okay, for you. So for my case, for our case, what we have done is we have, been, uh, we have given the KPIs into the model. On a weekly basis, we have been feeding it. So here for demonstration purpose, because I would not be able to show the organizational data, so I've just created some sample projects and put that KPI data into it just to see how it can be useful for us, okay? So moving back, uh, what I would, look, would like to show is that this model has been created now. It has been trained as well. Now how to use it? So one way of using it is that at a leadership level, as a leader, as a senior leader in the organization, if I want to see what all projects are there in the organization and how they are performing, and do I need to focus on any specific project or do I have a red alert there? So this is one of the examples in which we can do that. So if you see the prompt, can you please summarize all unique projects for week 45 and include CPI and SPI, these are our KPIs, in tabular format and share your analysis on the progress status of the projects, okay? So it lists down all the projects. These are all example projects, okay? It will list down the project with the KPIs it will also share what is the analysis of the projects. It will also share which projects are doing well, which are not doing well, which areas you need to focus. All this information will be available, okay? You will get a red alert for any of the projects which are not performing and that kind of analysis. And you can also talk to the model, okay? You can ask question and talk about any specific uh, queries you have, okay? It's so powerful. Now this is for the management team or the leadership team. Then as a project manager also, so as a PMO, uh, you can have uh, different analytics done on top of that. If a PMO is there in your organization and wants to do an analytics on top of what is happening in the projects, it can be done. And another area where which can be useful is for the project managers, okay? So for the project manager, a constant uh, challenge is that uh, they have all the information for the project, okay? Uh, but with their uh, thought process, with their experience, with their learnings, they are not able to take the right decisions on the right time, okay? So here the tool is definitely going to help, okay? And the model is going to help. It's uh, an example I wanted to show here. So le let me just read it out. I am the PM for Project Goa. Po Project Goa is one of the projects, okay? I would like to get help in understanding the current project health and your recommendation for potential risk and actions from my side. So that's what uh, the project manager is asking that question. And uh, the tool already has the project's information, okay? Tool already, already knows what the project data is because we are feeding the data on a weekly basis, okay? And based upon that context, it is going to tell, okay, your project is having these, these parameters. You, this is your current project situation. And this is, these are the potential risk. And these are the recommended actions, okay? And a project manager can also interact with the model if uh, it has uh, further questions and answers, okay? Okay, I think this was the main topics I wanted to cover. And then obviously there is a, uh, the, the, the usage, we have just tried to see how it has benefited us. So this is the KPI chart. Mostly all the KPIs, we got a positive response. And there are definitely uh, challenges and future outlook. So how much time I have? It's over. Okay. 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 So, uh, yes. So there are definitely con uh, 
challenges and uh, future outlook. So definitely we have to look at all the areas on all the challenges. And to conclude, A and Agile mutually enhance each other, fostering more efficient, collaborative and effective project management, and less ambitious uh, AI within Agile frameworks to navigate and lead in the rapidly evolving businesses. With that, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh. Thank you, everyone. Uh, before we conclude, one last, one last, a quick one at that. Probably will just give us a glimpse of how the session went, how do you feel. It's the same mentee quote that you did leverage. Before that, um, is there anybody who traveled like really, really far today? Ghaziabad. Oh, please. Please. Much appreciation. Oh, really? Is that the case? <laughs> Winning some brownie points. <laughs> Thank you, Dinesh.